Good night my dear friends. Today we are going to watch it some nice videos, and I'm going to start by showing you one that I found recently on the Big Black Light web. It's a music video for the new album by an Australian artist called Winter McQueen, also known as the frontman of psych pop band Sunflutes. The texture of the lines in the drawings, those blurred backgrounds, those colorful fillings like pastel crayons, that little mushroom shaped house like an old postcard illustration. Everything caught my attention, and I started to investigate the work of the video's author. He is also Australian, his name is Luke Player, he is an illustrator and graphic designer, and now we will see him in his world in a video, which appears on his website shot by Christopher Hope. Also in his website, he is defined as a collector and obsessive of old design, notably souvenir merchandise and psychedelia print. He uses bright and bold colors, type and imagery to touch on aspects of graphic work from a spectrum of eras. Hello, Luke. How are you? We were just watching the video shot by Christopher Hope that appears on your website. Is that your house and your place of work? It looks beautiful, where exactly is it? Have you always lived and worked there? Well, thank you for having me. This is my house in a small coastal town in New South Wales, Australia, called Stanwell Park. I grew up here and I'm glad to still be living here, and this is where I work. Pretty good. These posters are beautiful. The great rock pools of the south coast. So cool. And these matchboxes. Are they real? Did they make real matchboxes for those places with your designs? Are they still manufactured? Well, I guess they're real in the sense that I drew them, but they certainly didn't make matches with them. But I've got these big collections of old matchbooks to take inspiration from and I can kind of find a blank one or edit one to be empty and then put my own design on it and pretend. I have some here. Look this is from Guanaco's, a nightclub in Buenos Aires in the 70s. The, the Ruta Hotel in Olivos. And look at this one, it's from a brand of knitting machines called Juki Card. And you're going to love this sticker. It's from the Leo Leo Hotel, which is in Bariloque, a city in the south of Argentina. Luke, and these little paper bags, Helen's Bra Hot Bread Shop, Peter's Bakery, Kim Tim Chinese Restaurant. Are they currently in your designs? Or are they 50 years old and part of your antique collection that later inspires your poster designs? Uh, they are my designs, they're not old ones, but it's a high compliment that you thought so. I just look at so much old stuff that I think anything I do comes out looking like that. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but I like it. 
Oh, Luke, watch these, you're going to love these little pijitas, really. Here, if you sit in a traditional cafe in Buenos Aires, they serve it to you with these little packets of sugar. These ones in particular have these beautiful illustrations with city icons. In this one, for example, you can see the typical neighborhood of La Boca, with its bridge, and the painter, who in this case surely alludes to Benito Quincuela Martin, a famous Argentine painter who lived in the neighborhood and painted it throughout all his work, and in this one, you have two ladies drinking coffee, with the obelisk in the background, the most representative monument of Buenos Aires and Argentina, and the figure of one of the best known Argentines in the world, Carlos Gardel, the most important tango singer of all times. Many, many, many then I also found this colorful painting of a rural landscape that you did as cover art for the band The Pinheads. You also made an animated video for them. Now we are going to see it. Are they from Australia too? Tell me a little about that work. Yeah, that record cover was something I painted that was heavily inspired by American folk art and primitive art. Artists such as Grandma Moses or Maud Lewis. Here's the real thing, it's a little bit bigger than a record that I hand painted. The band The Pinheads is a group I am in with my brother and a few friends in Australia. We've been active for about 10 years. And that film clip I made was just heavily inspired by kind of gritty city, you know, 70s cartoons, New York City, Fritz the Cat, Robert Crumb, things like that. I'm glad with how it came out. You also made this other animated video for Straight Arrows, Walking Through My Mind. With this we would have already reviewed all your animated videos, or do we have any more left? Are you working on any new videos? I think there's a few more out there, I think I've done about 10 over the years, maybe not all of them good. <laughs> but I am working on new things, I can't talk about everything yet, but some Australian artists I'm really excited to work with. I guess the only other one we haven't mentioned is the newest one, Winnie McQuinn's clip Red Wall, which was all hand-drawn, frame by frame, and that was really fun to make. Of course, yes, we saw that one at the beginning. So, let's see the video for Straight Arrows, Walk In Through My Mind. Thanks for your time, Luke. Thanks for having us on your show.
I was recently doing the cover art for an album called Chicken Dinner by London-based Brazilian artist Luis Bruno. Now we are listening to track three, Ozempic is taking over the world. Here is the design for the tape edition. It was bad already before. Hello Louise, how are you? Hello. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. We're in London now. This is London, England, and I've lived here for the last 10 years. And Chicken Dinner is my fifth solo album using my own name, Luis Bruno. I wrote, recorded, played all the instruments, sang all the songs. There, yeah, I did it all by myself in this room we're in right now. Luis, you have released many albums with different names. Walter Willy, I know I'm an alien. Tell me, which one was the first and how long ago was that? This is my first album. I made this is from 2005. Walter Willie was made on a four track. That's my girlfriend at the time. She was she drew. It's a photo of Man Ray. Here's the back. We made 30 copies of this, and it's one of the favorite things I've ever done. And it sits here in my in my flat, and I just like to look at it because I'm really proud of it. I made this. So we got all the track listing. It's all in Portuguese. It's very inspired by the residents. And uh, there's drawings and things. And they call it the White Album. Like the Beatles' is White Album. I love the Beatles. Going back to your latest album, Chicken Dinner, tell me about your influences. My main influences for the album were the band Ween, obviously the man Frank Zappa and the early mothers of inventions. I love all of Frank Zappa's career, but um, for now I'll just say early mothers, uh, the 1967 album, we're only in it for the money, one of my favorite, I would say top five albums of all time. Uh, I like Mort Garson, uh, Bruce Hack, R. Stevie Moore, Brian Wilson, uh, Arnaldo Baptista from Os Mutantes, my favorite Brazilian band. I had the privilege of opening for them. He wasn't in the band. He had been long gone, but uh, still his creation. I opened for them in 2007. So I have a, oh yeah, I forgot to mention a book. Swim Through Darkness, the story of Craig Smith, later known as Maitreya Kali. Uh, this was a man born in uh, LA and it was kind of big in the music industry there. And he wrote song, famous songs for people like the Monkees and went on a trip to India. And you know, it was one of those um, L LSD stories. He took some LSD and some changed in him and recorded an album called Apache double album first half is Apache and then uh, Inca that's the cover of his album that he made himself uh, after he had a um, nervous breakdown so I guess I'm interested and I sort of identify with if you will these sort of artists in the vein of Brian Wilson uh, Craig Smith this guy here I was just talking about Sid Barrett I like very much uh, Skip Spence, Rocky Erickson, Arnaldo Baptista himself, Damião Experiência, another Brazilian artist I love dearly, uh, who was also an outcast. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much interested in, in, in the art world as well, like Jean Dubuffet and all the outsider artists that he brought to prominence, like people that live in um, psychiatric institutions and make great, beautiful, unfiltered art with no commercial sort of sense. It's just 
they create a little world and they live in it. So that's kind of like the art and artists I'm interested in. Art that has a lot of uh, visual imagery in the sound itself. And um, you know what I mean? And yeah, that's kind of what I'm into. So outsider art, outsider music. Wesley Willis, I listen to a lot of Wesley Willis. I whoop Batman's ass. Uh, Daniel Johnston, obviously, you know, and uh, let me see what else, what else comes to mind. Yeah, I'll think of something. to this band a lot the meat puppets i love them and while i was making this album i was reading this book too high to die by greg prato i think that's how you say his name great uh biography on the meat puppets uh it's only interviews of people that were there around the time and that know the band and the band themselves are on this so too high to die meet the meat puppets beautiful very inspiring band Two brothers, the Kirkwood brothers, had many struggles and difficulties, and um, just just pure art, just artists making beautiful, inspiring music. 33 and a third series. This is the Chocolate and Cheese book, the making of the Ween album, Chocolate and Cheese from 1994, one of my favorite records of all time. Ween was a great big influence on all the songs if you know ween you like ween and you listen to my album you will see i was reading this manual how to repair a reno 4 i found it in the trash i like the drawings i don't know how to drive the car i've got a bike you can ride it if you like it's got a basket a bell that rings and things to make it look good album, the guitar, some stuff, North London, Crouch End, That's where all the stuff happened, speakers, Jimi Hendrix, Old of Love. Louise, you recorded everything on a four track just like this one, right? A Fostex. I just saw it above your couch. This was something very important that I used on the album. It's a Fostex multi-tracker cassette, XR3. There's a tape that has the songs that were actually on the album. So this is featured prominently in on all the tracks. There's a lovely pitch wheel, which was used a lot on all of the songs. And um, I love machines like this, and I've been using these for 20 years now, I think. I started recording on them when I used to call myself Walter Willie. And uh, and I started using a Fostex X14, and then I've had different ones over the years. I had a Tascam 414, I still have that one. 
add a Korg, uh, one of the big chunky ones with built-in effects, and um, this is the one I'm currently using now. When exactly did you record the music for this album? It was made in December, which is not my particularly favorite time in, to be in England. It's just a weird time. Uh, there's no, I don't know, it's dark and cold and Christmas. Uh, so I made, this was right around the time when I was putting the band together. So I have a live band, Luis Bruno and the adult children were playing these songs live off of Chicken Dinner. The first song on it is called Kids Vaping on the Double Decker Bus. And that is a true story, man. Uh, it's, it's, I'll tell you the bus, it's a 210 bus. It goes from Finchley Park, terminates at Brent Cross Shopping Center. And I'm on, I find myself in this bus a lot. I use this bus a lot, at least three times a week. And a lot of the time, oh, I always go up to the top deck and uh, as time goes by, you realize that without you even realizing, you're in the middle of um, of a vaping section, and you know teenagers, uh, they just go up there because it's it's quiet. There's not a lot of people a lot of the times. Usually guys like me, <laughs> and they just start vaping, and unbeknownst to me, I'm all of a sudden in the middle. Of, all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of a vaping section and uh, all sorts of, you know. So the song talks about the different flavors and tropical fruit and jewel, uh, mango jewel, and about uh, many other things, about how there's this whole wellness thing going on in society right now. Uh, it's being, uh, you know, I mean, fi finally, you know, I always say that like, yeah, I had uh, anxiety before it was uh, trendy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a line in it that says, uh, Mental health is now trending, having anxiety is hip. And uh, yeah, the song speaks for itself, I guess. So people love it at the gigs. We played it last night at the show and it went down really well. What used to be cool isn't cool anymore. Why don't we go for a run? That seems like so much fun. Mental health is now trending. Having anxieties hip. Traffic lights, they are changing. Cyclists don't give a shit. And kids are vaping. And what about this one, Louis? I like this tune. Track number six was called, it's called, uh, It's Been So Long, and that's a really old song I wrote many years ago, maybe 15 years ago, 2007, I think. It's 19 years, almost 20 years ago. I had it on a four track on a cassette somewhere and uh, decided to re-record it. I remember I had a nice kazoo solo that I liked, uh, and I, yeah, I like the kazoo very much. And here we have a cover of David Bowie, and from my favorite album, Cool. Is it a bonus track? And this is Bandcamp only. Bandcamp only. We will have two bonus tracks. One is a cover I made of All the Mad Men by David Bowie from the Man Who Sold the World album, which is an album I love. And I love this song in particular. It speaks to my soul and um, speaks to experiences I've had personally, and I just relate to it so much, and I love David Bowie. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Salvador Cresta, for making the beautiful artwork. It looks great, and I am humbled, and just 
lots of love to anybody out there that even listens to my songs and if you like them I love you and if you don't I love you too you know and it's all good and life is beautiful it can be beautiful it can be shitty but it can be beautiful and yeah let's keep on making art and music lots of love Eu quero te contar uma história sobre um homenzinho pequenininho um gnomo chamado Alfredo e os gnominhos ficam em casa sozinhos comendo, dormindo, tomando seus tragos e usavam um manto escarlate. Well, my dear friends, the time has come to close this episode. I'm going to leave you with a video I finished last week, for the band Dream Machine. I made it with old magazines, illustrations from an encyclopedia on esotericism, and some VHS, like this one of Carl Sagan's Cosmos. I hope you like it, and see you in the next episode. Good night.
你要的善。